Greetings and welcome to the introduction to physical science. In this lecture, we are going to talk about quantization of atoms and the Bohr model of the atom and how we can use those to understand the electron levels and how electrons can move within an atom. So let's go ahead and get started. First, we want to look at and review electromagnetic waves. Electromagnetic waves are waves that travel at the speed of light, which is 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And we looked previously in our physics section at the entire electromagnetic spectrum, which includes things like radio waves, microwaves, infrared, ultraviolet, x-rays, and gamma rays, in addition to the more familiar visible light, which is just a small portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. And we also looked at a black body radiation as an ideal emitter, which emits radiation at all frequencies based on just its temperature. And we can see that here. When we look at a black body, the temperature will tell you where the peak is. So as this peak declines, then you are moving towards lower and lower temperatures. So something at 2500 kelvins will peak out here in the infrared. Something at 4400 will have a peak in the red portion of the spectrum. And something at 5500 kelvin will have a peak near the middle of the visible spectrum in the yellow green region. Now one other thing we want to look at is the photoelectric effect which is one of the things that shows the dual nature of light meaning that light can act as a particle or a wave depending on the circumstances. So this is one thing that Einstein came up with and it turns out that electrons are ejected only when there is a minimum required energy. So when we send in photons of red light no electrons are ejected. And the key is that it doesn't matter how much red light I send in, it is not a total amount of energy. It is the energy of the individual photons. So I could send billions of red photons at this material and no electrons will come out. However, if I send green light, which has a higher energy, or blue light, even at a lower intensity than the red, electrons can be ejected outward. So this shows that light is behaving as a particle because it does not matter how much the intensity of the waves are, how many waves I'm sending through. If they don't meet a certain minimum uh, energy, then they are not going to eject that electron. Now let's look at some examples of some things we can do with this. First of all, we're going to look at light from a neon sign that has a wavelength of 640 nanometers. And we want to find the energy. So how do we do that? Well, energy is equal to h Planck's constant multiplied by the frequency. And because we know that the speed of light is equal to so because we know that the speed of light is equal to the product of the frequency and the wavelength, we can then solve for the wavelength being the speed of light, or sorry, the frequency being the speed of light divided by the wavelength. So what was frequency here, we can substitute for C divided by lambda. And when we do this, we can put in all of our numbers. We know what Planck's constant is. We know the speed of light and we know the wavelength. Now we're given the wavelength in nanometers. And remember that we have to convert that to meters in order to use it. And when we do this, we can then calculate that the energy of a photon is for this photon is 3.10 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. So we can go ahead and calculate exactly what that wave what that energy is based on either the frequency if we're given that or the wavelength if we are given a wavelength. Now when we look at spectra, we want to look at one type of spectra. We looked at the continuous spectrum, which was the black body spectrum. But we also get line spectra or a bright line spectrum. And this is where energy is given off only at very specific wavelengths. And the pattern that we see is different for every single atom. So sodium gives us a specific pattern of lines. Hydrogen gives us another pattern. Calcium, 
mercury. And you can see that each line, some have similar colors, but they pattern the fingerprint that we see are exactly or are never exactly the same for any two atoms. So each atom will have a different pattern of spectral lines. And this is how we can identify what substances are made up of without even analyzing them directly. So if we were looking at a star, we could look at the pattern of lines and determine what elements were present in that star, even if we could not get a sample of it. Now the other thing we wanted to look at in this section was the Bohr model of the atom. Previously we looked at some of the ideas of the quantization. And here we want to look at some of the theories that were developed on the larger scales did not work in the world of atoms. And that's because atoms have specific discrete energy levels. So in an atom you can have an energy in the ground state down here. You can have it in this second state here, third, and so on. But you cannot have an electron in an intermediate state in between these two. So an electron can only exist in the second state or the first state, but cannot exist anywhere in between them. And the Bohr model tells us that the energy of that level for a single electron, so looking at this case generally for hydrogen, is given by K times z squared divided by n squared where n is the quantum number and z is the element. So k is then given by 2.179 times 10 to the negative 18th joules. So that would tell us the energy we multiply it by z squared we divide it by n squared and we can then determine the energy of that specific energy level. So when we look at these, then we can see that the transitions can occur specifically between these. So when energy is absorbed, the electron moves from a lower energy level to a higher energy level. Generally, the electron is in the ground state, the n equals one state. So the lowest quantum state, the lowest energy level in which it can be. However, it could also for various reasons be in the second state or even the third state and you could get jumps in there. However, you can only go in between those specific energy levels. So when you absorb energy, then the electron moves to a higher energy level. When light is emitted, then the electron moves to a lower energy level. And that's when we get those specific lines that we see. So each transition represents a different line that would be visible when we looked at the bright line spectra. Now we can look at going about calculating these. And let's go ahead and calculate. Let's use the hydrogen atom. And we want to calculate a hydrogen atom in an, for n equals 3. So what we need to do, first of all, is to uh, get our equation up here. And the equation says that E is equal to k z squared over n squared. And then we can put in our numbers that we know. For hydrogen, z is 1. We're looking at the n equals 3 state. And we know our constant is 2.179 times 10 to the negative 18th joules. And when we go ahead and calculate that, we can then calculate what the energy of that level is. And note that the energy will be negative as we are uh, going from, when we're going from a state there, it is going to be a lesser energy. So we're actually going to get a negative energy and that's defined by the sign out in front in the equation. Now the last thing we wanted to do was to summarize the Bohr model and what we find is that the energies of the electrons are quantized and described by quantum numbers and we'll look at those in more detail in the coming lectures. But quantum numbers are integer numbers with specific allowed values. So you can have in the energy levels you can have the n equals one state, two, three and so on but you cannot have one and a half or three and three quarters. It can only be those specific integer levels. The energy increases with increasing distance from the nucleus. So as you get further away from the nucleus, that takes more energy. And it wants to be in the closest energy level to the nucleus, which is the lowest energy state.
And we looked at the discrete lines in the spectra, which come because of these quantized energies where energy is not quantized, then we would be able to see uh, a whole band of light, we would see the whole continuous spectrum, because they are quantized, then we get those specific lines, which helps us to determine compositions of, of, of gases and things that we cannot specifically uh, study or sample. So let's go ahead and finish up with our summary. And we looked at the photoelectric effect and the line spectra as examples that help us to understand the idea of quantization. And we looked at the Bohr model to explain the energy levels in a single electron atom. Now don't forget it's going to get much more complicated than that. In a single electron atom we're talking about hydrogen or any other atom that has had all of the rest of its electrons removed. So when we're looking at multiple atom, electron atoms it is going to be more complex. And those quantum numbers describe the specific states for those electron energies. So that concludes this lecture on quantization and the Bohr model. We'll be back again next time for another topic in physical science. So until then, have a great day everyone, and I will see you in class.